And here in North Carolina, 25 people contracted the virus while traveling abroad. Researchers at UNC Chapel Hill are at the forefront of finding a cure. They gave me an exclusive look at their state-of-the-art lab and the virus. For a virus primarily spread by mosquitoes, researchers at UNC Chapel Hill are getting their inspiration from another insect as they work to find a cure for Zika. This is really sort of the, the beehive, the hub of it. Douglas Widman is on a team of nearly 10 people at UNC's Department of Epidemiology. They've been hard at work behind the scenes long before you first heard about Zika. This has been on my radar since last May when I first heard about it bubbling down there. By down there, he means Brazil, currently the hot spot for Zika. To start their work on a cure at UNC, they needed the virus, but they ran into complications. For whatever reason, Brazil has been very reluctant on supplying actual virus to researchers in the U.S. So Whitman and his team took matters into their own hands. So in here is is a 2015 Brazilian outbreak strain of Zika. Of Zika. This is this is about as close to what's causing the outbreak right now as there is. Using the genetic code of the virus published online, they created it in the lab, but they didn't stop there. Not only have you created the virus, you've created its family tree. Yeah, basically, yeah, um, and we thought that was really important. It's important because while Zika first appeared about 70 years ago, up until 2005, it only infected roughly 40 people. Now, the fear is nearly 100 million people could be infected over the next three years, with current symptoms ranging from mild fevers to paralysis in adults to babies born with serious birth defects. It looks like something changed with the virus. Um, the they vi got more dangerous. Yeah. By looking at each generation of the virus as it spread from Africa through Asia to South America, Whitman hopes his team can pinpoint what changed. Then, as he puts it, the fun begins. Now we get to have some fun because now we get to start to make targeted rational changes to the genome of these viruses and ask, does this make the virus do much worse in mosquitoes, for instance, do much better in mosquitoes? Um, does it make it more pathogenic in mammals? Those answers are the key to vaccine development at UNC. And while there's no set timetable for one, Whitman says nature, with the coming frost to kill the mosquitoes, is our best ally, at least in the short term. I believe we'll see a peak in Zika cases. I don't know exactly when that will be, maybe next summer. Maybe it'll be this summer, but I don't think it'll ever go away completely. Now, the type of mosquito spreading Zika in Florida lives in North Carolina, but so far, fortunately, the virus is not spreading here. However, right now, North Carolina public health officials are following the cases of a handful of pregnant women who have tested positive for the virus. There's also evidence Zika can be sexually transmitted. Now, in light of all this, as people from around the world flock to Brazil for the Summer Olympics, those researchers at UNC are doubling their efforts. So what can you do to help curb the spread of Zika? For most of us, it's all about limiting mosquito bites, where bugs sprays and clear out areas with standing water in your yards. Well, another dangerously hot day 